Hello. So, on the 28th of February, randomly when Edinburgh has decided that snow is in order, I've come into town to tell you the story of Deacon Brodie. And once again guys, anyone famous in Edinburgh, wake up on named after them. God, I mean look at the weather here right now, honestly. None of that was here yesterday. If that isn't dedication to you guys, I don't know what is. If you haven't subscribed by now, and I've came in here to do this today, you really should. Look at the state of me. Oh my god, you'd think I was at the North Pole. So forgive me guys, I am going to keep walking and tell the story while I'm out and about because it's easier in this weather if I just keep moving. Deacon William Brodie. Now that first bit I showed you there, Brodie's Close, was not actually named after Bro uh, Deacon Brodie, it was named after his dad, also Deacon Brodie. Um, he had a locksmith business here in town. He was also a very well respected member of the town and was invited on to Edinburgh Council at the time and became the Deacon of Rights. His son, William Brodie, was a little bit of a playboy, I think it's probably the best way to put it. Uh, gambler, womanizer, frequented the many um, Edinburgh brothels of the time. Um, and then his father passed away. He took over the locksmith business um, and became a very well respected gent about town as well. But also kept up the old um, playboy lifestyle. So debt started to mount up. And Brody decided to try to find a way to supplement his income. So why did all the kids stay in the camera? You still see me? So what he did was he got himself a team, three guys, um, to help him start to rob places round right about Edinburgh. And Brody was clever. He was a locksmith about town. So he started to take wax cuttings off the keys that he was fixing around town and houses. Give it a little bit of time. Wouldn't do it straight away. Give it a little bit of time. And then go into people's houses and rob them. And him and his merry band of, of thieves, of rogues, three of them, were up to this for a while. And the, the Edinburgh authorities could not figure out what was going on. They just had no idea. They were wondering how all these places were getting rubbed into. There was no traces of any break-ins. Obviously fingerprints didn't exist at the time. Until eventually they started to look at everyone and suspicion eventually came round to Deacon Brody. So, can you see me? Can you still see me? Eventually the police caught one of Brody's uh, team, a guy called George Smith. Um, he was an English guy, a bit of a scallywag as well, but also a bit of a locksmith as well. He turned evidence against the other two members of Brody's team, not Brody, Andrew Ainsley and John Brown. They all got captured. George Smith got set free for turning evidence against the other two, and they got captured. Now, whoa, whoa, whoa. Look at me, look at the state of me. Um, the authorities were like, well, no offence, but these two aren't clever enough to be doing this. So one of them, Andrew Ainsley, turned evidence against Deacon William Brodie, and he was caught. Now, very wildly, he was going to be hung on the gallows that he had actually helped commission. Some stories say that he helped design it, uh, but uh, I've seen sort of different arguments about that. Some people say he designed it, some people just say he commissioned it and been on the council. However, he was going to be the first person hung on it no matter what. There's a couple of stories after that. It splits off. One was he hired a French doctor to make a sort of thing that would go down his throat, which would stop the drop from breaking his neck. The other is that he bribed the hangman to put the, note, the noose on a harness and a hook that was in the clothes he was wearing so it looked like he was being hung and didn't. What they do know is after he, he supposedly dropped, his friends took his body 
there's then reports afterwards that Deacon William Brodie was seen wandering about Europe. Whether this is true or not, don't know. But apparently, by one of the things I looked up, is a little while later they did dig up Deacon Brodie's grave and found an empty grave. Um, an empty grave. So, whether his friends had taken his body and reburied it somewhere else, or he had managed to escape, don't know. But he was friends with um, Robbie Burns around about the time when he was alive. Robbie Burns a notorious womanizer as well. But another writer took um, close notice of the story of Deacon Brody, inspired by the fact that someone could be so well known. Oh, look at the state of the camera. You back with me? There we go. Inspired by the fact that someone could be so well known and respected by day, and then by night time, be this completely different person, this criminal, this rogue, this playboy, this womanizer, this drunk. Complete opposites, both in the one man. And that inspired Robert Louis Stevenson to write the tale of Jekyll and Hyde. Look at the state of the grass market and everything right now. Honestly, this has just hit us. So for obvious reasons, um, I've had to come back into the car. I was going to do a little bit more wandering about and kind of show you a couple of sites of Deacon Brodie and uh, Deacon Brodie's Tavern, which I showed you, and Deacon Brodie's Close, named after his dad. Now, legend says he was born in Deacon Brodie's Close. Probably most people would be born at home then. And the gallows that hung him, you can see it. It's just the opposite side of the street. So the journey of his life went from... Not very far, really, but then who's dead in Edinburgh at the time? It's a great story, Deacon Brodie. It means a lot to me. It played the, the story of Deacon Brodie. I did a musical in my early 20s, um, which was a big part of my life when I did that during the Edinburgh Festival. So the story itself, to me and my friends, means a lot because it brought a lot of us together. So I do love that story. Um, I'd love to play Deacon Brodie again in something. Um, but it's a brilliant tale of duplicity, of scallywag array, if that's a thing. Um, and it kind of fits Edinburgh as well with this beautiful image that it had at the time and the undertones of what the city represented and what was going on. Anyway. I hope you've enjoyed that story of Deacon Brodie. It's not quite the video I wanted to make. We've kind of had a little bit of, you know, change because of the weather. But that's life. Um, again, guys, if you watch our videos and you enjoy, please subscribe. Uh, you've no idea how much it means to us uh, when you subscribe, when you leave a comment. Um, it's brilliant. I love replying to the comments. Please leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Um, give it a thumbs up. Give it a like. Um, and you know share whatever you do with these videos share it um but till next time bye humans <laughs>